Lesson 22, The Wisdom of Jesus In today's lesson we will learn about the wisdom of Jesus in dealing with proud religious people and how God will judge those who refuse the invitation to honor his Son. Jesus tells a parable about a king's invitation to the wedding of his son. The king invited many guests to come to the wedding of his son, but some made light of it, while others had more important personal matters to attend to, and others abused and killed the king's servants. When the king heard about the wicked men who killed his servants and rejected his kind invitation, he sent his army to destroy those men and burn their city. These men should have honored their king, but instead they despised him and insulted him greatly. This pictures for us how some people respond to God's invitation to salvation and to heaven. God sends his messengers, preachers, and evangelists to share God's grace and forgiveness. Some people make light of it and do not care to hear the message or respond. Others just feel they have too many personal things to attend to. Worst of all are those people who openly rebel against God's servants, abusing, insulting, persecuting, or even killing them. The king intended to honor his son, so he sent out more servants into the highways to find whoever was willing to come to the wedding feast. They brought in many guests, and the banquet hall was full of guests. This reminds us of how Jesus came into the world with an offer of salvation for the Jews, but many of them stubbornly refused to respond to the invitation, and so the offer they rejected went out to all nations. Today the scripture tells us that whosoever will may come. We are all invited to share in the honor of the King's Son, that is, our Lord Jesus Christ. Those who refuse to honor God's Son will meet with God's judgment in a coming day. In the parable there was one man found among the guests not wearing a wedding garment. It was a tradition to provide garments for guests to wear at a wedding, and if someone did not wear the garment that was provided, it would be very insulting to the host of the wedding. This is like people who try to come to heaven with their own garments of righteousness and not the righteousness that God provides through Christ. It is highly insulting to God to present him our own good works for salvation when he has already freely provided us the garments of salvation. Through the work of Christ, and if we refuse God's way of salvation, we can expect God's severe judgment. The man in the story is said to be cast into outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Jesus ended this story with this familiar phrase, For many are called, but few are chosen. And this means that while many are called by God to receive salvation, there are only a few who are actually saved because they are the ones who not only heard the invitation but have responded to it by accepting God's free gift of forgiveness through Jesus Christ. Jesus spoke this parable to help the Pharisees and other religious leaders understand their own failure to honor God's Son, but they did not hear or appreciate the message he gave them. Instead, they tried to trip him in his words. They thought if they could ask him a difficult question and he could not answer it, then they would have a good reason to accuse him. When they asked him about whether it was lawful to pay taxes to Caesar, they thought they had him trapped, for if he said no, then he would look like a revolutionary against the Roman authority and they could hand him over to the Romans for prosecution. If he answered yes, then he would lose favor among the Jews who hated the tyranny of the Roman occupation of their land. But Jesus answered wisely when he said, Render to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God the things that are God's. 
By this he neither appeared to be as a revolutionary against the Romans, but he also gave honor to God. There was no fault that could be found in his words, and those who posed the question marveled at his answer, and then left him. Then some of the Sadducees thought they would try to trip up Jesus with a hard question. The Sadducees did not believe in resurrection. They proposed a very unlikely situation, where a Jewish woman lost her husband, and being childless, the man's younger brother was expected to marry her and raise up children for his dead brother. They imagine a woman who had lost seven husbands, all leaving her without children, each seeking to fulfill his obligation to raise up children for his elder brother who had died. Now they said, if this woman dies also, whose wife would she be in the resurrection? This, they thought, was a perfect question to trip up Jesus. However, Jesus points out to these men their lack of understanding of the scriptures. He points out that in the resurrection, people will be like the angels, who neither marry or are given in marriage. He further explains that the scriptures plainly state that God was the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. This proved that God was the God of the living and not the dead, because these words were quoted in scripture long after these three men had already died, and God speaks of them as living, thus proving the resurrection. Jesus then asked the Pharisees a question about King David, quoting him in the Psalms as referring to the Messiah as both his son, but also his Lord. Jesus asked how could he be David's son and also his Lord. No one had an answer, and no one dared to ask him any more questions, lest they be made to look foolish. Jesus is that son of David, who is also his Lord, for he was born from the seed of David, but also was born of the Holy Spirit, and is God manifest in the flesh. This was a difficult idea for the Jews to accept, so much so that they sought to kill him for blasphemy, not ever willing to consider that Jesus was indeed the Lord their God. We also need to understand and acknowledge Jesus as Lord if we want to be saved and go to heaven. For many are called, but few are chosen. Matthew chapter 22 verse 14.